The story of Ormus starts in 1976 with a cotton farmer from Arizona called David Hudson. He had begun analyzing the mineral content of his land, specifically searching for precious metals, when he began to find a strange white powder that no one seemed to be able to identify. His anomalous substance had some very strange properties. In the sunlight, it would explode in a flash of light, but in the dark, it would float away from his hands. And at different temperatures, it would change weight and would sometimes disappear altogether. Hudson spent millions trying to find out what he had. Yet according to all the analysis, his white powder was pure nothing. It turns out that Hudson, who discovered Ormus, was doing something very similar. He quickly realized that Ormus was extremely rich in precious platinum group metals, an unbelievable 2,400 ounces per tonne. Essentially, he believed that Ormus is largely composed of precious metals in an exotic state of matter, where the metal atoms don't form any bonds with each other, but exist as separate single atoms, making them what he called orbitally rearranged monoatomic elements. But because it can't be measured, and therefore can't be proven, the scientific community ignored his findings. And then, in 1992, Hudson goes a step further and announces that his white powder is in fact the legendary Philosopher's Stone. The mythical prize of the alchemists, an elixir of life that will cure all illnesses, bring about spiritual enlightenment, and turn base metals into gold. He set out to produce it for human consumption on a really large scale. But a disastrous acid leak caused Hudson's facility to shut down just days before it became operational. And then, Hudson simply disappeared. Some believe the discovery of Ormus was most likely only a rediscovery. In ancient Egypt, a precious mineral referred to in many temples and steels was used by the priests and pharaohs in many of their rituals. The powder was made by the priests and used to make ceremonial bread cakes for the pharaohs so that they might live longer and be closer to God. Centuries later, in 1904, British archaeologist Sir Flinders Petrie stumbled across a hidden temple on Mount Cerebit in the middle of the Sinai Desert. Inside the temple, he found huge quantities of an unknown white powder that resembled ash, yet strangely, he found no evidence of the fires. A few wayward historians have dared to suggest that this is the very mountain in the Sinai Desert under which the Hebrews in 1400 BC, led by Moses out of Egypt, camped during the time of the Exodus. Moses, who according to the unlikely Bible story, had been found in the rushes and adopted by and raised in the Egyptian royal family. Moses, who is much more likely to be the half-Israelite pharaoh Akhenaten, grandson of Tutmosis, banished to the Sinai around 1400 BC for trying to ban the worship of idols and who developed the notion of a single faceless god named Aten. As a pharaoh, Moses would have known all of the secrets of the priests and pharaohs. Moses would have known all about the bread of life, made from the white powder of gold. The Egyptians called the powder Mufkut, but they knew it was no ordinary mineral. Mufkut means what is it, but literally translated, the hieroglyph reads spirit, fire, stone, part magic, part precious mineral. Manna in Hebrew is also translated as what is it? Manna, miraculous edible substance that God provided for the Israelites during their travels in the Sinai, and that was stored by Moses in the Ark of the Covenant. Does this also shed light on the strange story in Exodus when Moses, furious that his people were worshipping an idol of a golden calf, took the golden statue, burnt it in the fire, ground it to a powder, mixed it with water, and made the children of Israel drink of it? was knowledge of the secret arts of alchemy what the Hebrews had been chosen for. Did Jesus know about these processes? Was he an alchemist? And his alleged progeny, the Knights Templar, who took their name from Solomon's temple, the last known resting place of the Ark of the Covenant, famed for their secrecy and political power, who created the first international banking system, who massed more money than the King of France, 
and who claimed to be the guardians of the Ark of the Covenant. Was their secret actually the knowledge of alchemy? <laughs> 